If you haven't heard of it, this is Brother Rob Wilson. Welcome to the Men of Destiny channel. Thanks for checking out the channel and this video. If you haven't heard about it, T.D. Jakes is receiving a lot of heat from the feminist community due to a portion of a message he allegedly, I guess you could call it preaching, but it's not much preaching. He preached on Father's Day in which he goes in really softly. I mean, it's not really all that hard. He goes in on and tells the truth about what's happening to women in society. I've seen a lot of people review this video and say it's that he's he's talking about black women, but he's not talking about black women. He's just talking about women. OK, and he's telling in large part the truth. And I want to show you that clip and then I'm going to bring scripture after that. Um, and this is this is a message that's absent from the church due to cowardice. And in my, in my opinion, it's due to cowardice. It's due to cowering down to to femininity and um, watering down the message of the Bible. Let's get into what T.D. Jakes got in such hot water about. OK, this is um, a portion. This is only two and a half minutes of a message he gave on Father's Day. I'm sure you can look up the whole message. And he got in major hot water about this from the feminist community. And the reason why he got in such hot water about this is this should be a message that is is given on more than Father's Day. This should be a message that that. Let me just say it like it is. Cowardice men aren't afraid to speak in in on numerous occasions during the year because we have allowed the culture to creep in to the church and cause alleged pastors to begin watering down the truth of Scripture and the roles of men and women in even alleged Christian family circles because we want to preach a culturally soft message and not maybe if you're so triggered over this, it just goes to show you how soft the message is and how irrelevant it is, how terrified male preachers are to speak the truth of God's word. Let's listen. If Adam had not allowed Eve to pour into him, sin would have never come into the world. Okay, now, I just want to point out that this is complete biblical illiteracy. It had nothing to do with Eve pouring into him, and if he had not allowed it. A woman is not biblically restrained from pouring into her man, okay? The, the, the idea of marriage is not like the man pours and pours and pours and pours and pours and, pours and receives nothing, Okay. So he's already biblically illiterate. So I don't I do not want to promote T.D. Jakes as a sound Bible teacher. He's and the more I grow in the know, the worse he gets. So this is biblical illiteracy has nothing to do with the woman born into the man. Sin came into the world because Adam broke the order. We were not designed to receive from women biblically illiterate illiterate the order is the man is the head and the leader of the family we are designed to see receive from one another we are designed to receive from one another okay there is reciprocity in marriage it's not just one person pours out one person gives 100 percent. one person gives 150 percent, and the other person does nothing so he's off of sound doctrine completely. It has to do with headship and it has to do with leadership and it has to do with submission. Adam abdicated his role of leadership. He abdicated his role of headship. It's not that he couldn't have received something from his wife. I often say the role of a man is to protect, to provide and preside, but it isn't to be the one who comes around feeding everybody constantly and receives nothing. So this is almost he's he's still gripped in the man shaming message that most churches preach today, that a man's role is solely to give, 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 give and be a human man butler for his wife and family. Jesus wasn't a man butler. He fed the church, but he didn't walk around being a doormat to the church. So this is this is doormatism. This is the this is part of the sickness of today's current society. 
Your self-esteem is compromised when you have to ask your wife for lunch money. I have to agree if he's talking about the type of individual man who's just a taker, take, 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 give nothing, never work, irresponsible, unaccountable. Remember the first thing that fell in the fall that we see is that before the fall, the man and woman were both naked and felt no shame. So there was transparency. There was authenticity. There wasn't uh, hiding and covering up. But the next thing that we see visibly fell is God went to Adam and said, what is it? Where are you, Adam? And he says, I was hiding because I was naked. Who told you you was naked? Did you eat the fruit of the tree that I told you not to eat? Well, the woman you gave me. So the first thing that the man throws off is accountability and responsibility. See, men have, men are called to be accountable and responsible. But Eve, God went to Eve and said, what have you done? And Eve said, the serpent you put here with me, he tricked me. So both men and women fell off of accountability and responsibility. And both men and women have an accountability and a responsibility. So yeah, if, if, if you have to go to your wife because you refuse to work, you refuse to be held accountable, you refuse to be responsible, it will affect your self-esteem. You are in a degraded status. But if, if a man loses his job and he um, is looking for work, there's no shame in that. See, this is, again, the man shaming thing that, that most men are so wounded by in the church because we, we want to project onto men that, that you're always going to have a job. You're always going to be um, uh, able to provide at the same level. What if he gets sick? What if he has a disability, a disability medical condition? Okay. What if he can't do what he could do at one point in time? See, this is the, this is the way he's got this totally perverted. I'm not saying you got to be rich. I'm not saying you got to be uh, famous. I'm saying that you have got to be the one who pours in, not the one who takes out. I agree. You know, a husband's role is not to be a taker, take, 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 and never give. But it's to be a leader and it's to be the head of his family and it's to have a vision for his family. And Adam started eating out of his wife's hand. Sin came in because the divine order. No, 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 no. Adam ate the tr fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It had nothing to do with Eve's hand. This is this is perversion. Okay. This is how these false teachers, all these mega pastors like T.D. Jakes have this, they're, he's twisting it and in a way that he, he ends up angering women, but this still is appealing to women. A man is not supposed to eat out of his wife's hand. Why not? This is, has to do with, did God really say you should not eat from the tree of the garden? And Eve said, well, he said we could not eat of the tree that's in the middle of the garden. And we cannot touch it or we will surely die. God never gave a geographic location. He gave a specific identification, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's what God said. And he didn't say you couldn't touch it. See the perversion? See the perversion? When Adam ate out of his wife's hand, it had nothing to do with it. Feed him grapes, feed him apples, feed him oranges, feed him steak. It had nothing to do with that. No shame in that. Feed your husband. OK, give him food. He needs food. You're part of his food. Your respect, your loyalty, your honor will feed that man. And he should respect you and be loyal to you and honor you. And that's supposed to feed your soul. Sickness and 50 seconds into it, he hasn't said much that's biblically sound yet. What's broken? That's not this what, okay. breaks all sociological order that the culture we're living in now because we are raising up women to be men. That I agree with. That I agree with. To be sole providers, to be protectors, to be fighters, to be masculine. I'm not disagreeing with that. And then they go home. And they play that role with their husband. Who usually, because he loves her like Adam loved Eve, gives into her and cowers before her and caters to her. Hey! 
And see, this is how men become, instead of leaders and instead of heads, they become whipping boys. They become doorposts for abuse. And this is the this is the shame that's in the church, that men are portrayed as the always perpetrators of every evil and wrongdoing in society and in marriage. Okay. And it's, there's never a real examination. There's, there's a heads and tails side of the story. There's a male and female role. There's a husband's role and there's a wife's role. And these cowards aren't, aren't brave enough to, to preach powerfully on a woman's role. You are not applauded for your femininity. You are applauded in the contemporary society by how tough, rough, nasty, mean, aggressive, hateful, possessive you are, and you are climbing the corporate ladder, but we are losing our families. He ain't telling nothing but the truth about women and the culture and the society at large. It sends a message that if you are a homemaker, you're less than. If you literally, you know, one of the things I applaud my wife for is the ironing of our kids' clothes to send them to school. You know, the meticulous detail she takes to their appearance and their schedule. Okay, she's very meticulous and she still works. But I I see that as the higher value thing than her working. Okay, I don't agree with culture. I don't agree with it at all. And also for men, that your soul value as a man is that you have kids that have every new iPad and every new iPhone and every new toy and every new trinket. You are more than that, men. You are more than a paycheck. You are more than the next gift you give, the, the next shoes you buy, the next, the next thing that you pull out of your wallet. You're more than that. And even in Christendom, even in the church, we have men who are allowed to settle for less than being biblical manhood. I know you can buy your own car. I know you can buy your own house. But until you create a need that I can pour into, I have no place in your life. So stop coming home bragging to me about how much you don't need me and wonder why I shy away. It's not a competition. Marriage is not a competition. It, think about what you say when you say, I don't need a man. Think about what you say. You saying, I don't need what the Bible prescribes as a necessary role to have children or to be a wife. Guess what you need? Essential. If you're a husband, you need a wife. <laughs> men, men don't have no ego over this. If I'm married, I need a woman to be married with. That's a requirement. And in, in, in my requirement in marriage, I have to be cooperative. I have to be combative or com compatible and not combative. Cooperative and not combative. Cooperative and not comp comp com in competition with. We've got this power struggle that exists in the society that comes down and roosts in the home. Oh, y'all ain't gonna talk back to me this morning. The conversation. You, you got kicked back because you only want to preach this message on Father's Day. You should preach a message like this once a month, maybe. Once a month, because it's that bad. The situation is that bad that, that people who claim the name of Christ get their value from the way they agree with what the world says more than the way they agree with what God's word says for both men and women. Okay. Center has become, let's prove to the men how, in the, how dispensable they are. And it is born out of pain because we hurt you. We? We? Who's we? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If a woman is wounded and she's traumatized, and you marry her, she carries her baggage and her trauma into the marriage. We didn't all do it. We didn't do it, boo. And this is the pathetic catering. This is catering. 
This is this is uh, virtue signaling. We hurt you. No, we didn't. We didn't do it. And see, this is the this is the the going around the cross, going around the necessity of the gospel to come into a person's life and provide the healing, and to provide the recovery, and to provide the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. My wife isn't meant to to pay the expenses of what any other woman in life has ever done to me or how my mama let me down or how my mama didn't care for me. And I'm not saying that about my mama. My mama did a good job. Okay. But it's not her role to pay for what my mama didn't do or what my ex-girlfriend didn't do or the way somebody else didn't meet my needs. This is what happens when a person is not healed and whole and fully committed to the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Why do we have so much divorce in the Christian church that looks just like the world? Because most folks aren't healed. Because most folks aren't biblical Christians. Because most folks don't want to play um, marriage on a chess level, which is biblical. They're playing marriage on a tic-tac-toe level. They're acting, they're, they're the same as the world. But you have them believing that they're, they're, they're Christians just because they come to church and clap to this nonsense. And betrayed you. And lied to you. He didn't do it. This is what happens when, you know, you don't tell people, it ain't your wife's role to heal you, brother. It ain't your wife's role to meet all the needs your mama didn't pour into you. To meet all the ways she didn't affirm you. She didn't uh, edify you. Or your family of origin didn't edify you. You, you're talking about something that's accomplished in Christ, not in your husband, not in your wife. You know, you've got a bitter, angry, contentious, divisive spirit, and he didn't put it in you. OK. Most people treat that person who's the right one like the wrong one because they're not healed in Christ. And cheated to you and you became like you became out of pain. That's true. Oh, Lord, I told you they wasn't going to like this, Jesus. You didn't tell him nothing. If I Okay, let's go back here. Um, th this is filled with mess, but I mean, it just, T.D. Jakes is getting his kickback because for one day out of the year, he wanted to tell a little bit of the truth, a, a twisted and perverted version of the truth. And that's the problem. You do that so much that that's what your audience is listening to. Just a, a woman, woman, thou art loosed. I am woman, hear me roar message that you always preach. And a man shaming, man blaming, victimhood message for all women. You know, the, the, the victory that we have in Christ is not so that you can go around persecuting all men for what some man didn't do. Because you, you should have that because you've met Christ. <laughs> Because you've met the Lord, because you are redeemed, because you are born again, because you're not identified with your pain anymore. You're identified with your healer and your redeemer. And Jesus is put first in your life. OK, I'm going to um, I'm going to go to Ephesians chapter five. And just to give this proper, complete context, I'm not going to just go down where it talks about husbands and wives. But I'm going to start at the beginning of the fifth chapter of Ephesians. Okay, so let's get into Ephesians 5, and it's going to get down where it talks about husbands and wives. Um, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is a message. This is, applies to men and women, not just men, not just women, men and women, that we are to be imitators of God. We're to be as beloved children, childlike, not childish but it goes on to say, but sexual immorality and impurity and covetousness. And these are all things that we're really talking about that we don't preach against in the church. We don't preach against sexual immorality. We don't preach against impurity. We don't preach against covetousness. What makes both men and women want to get out in that corporate field and, and prove who they are and whose they are and what they are based on accomplishment and business performance rather than on Christ. Let there be no filthiness or foolish talk or crude joking, which are out of place. Now, and this is done, even some of the things that, 
that that T.D. Jakes was saying about, you know, a man taken from his wife's hand and a, and a woman feeding her husband is out of order. That's foolishness. That's foolish talk. That's not biblical talk. That's perverting and twisting scripture. The role of a man is to lead. The role of the man is to be head. The role of the man is to teach his children and to even teach his wife. <gasps> no, that's what the Bible says. Teaching, leading, educating, edifying, setting a vision, having purpose, having a plan, having a place you're trying to take your family to, eternal life being one of them. It's crude joking. They're out of place. But instead, let there be thanksgiving for you. You know, usually if somebody brings up male headship or male leadership. It's a joke in the church. People start laughing. And then then a, the preacher will say something like, well, I'm not trying to meddle. You're supposed to meddle. The word of God is supposed to meddle because we don't want to be worldly people. We don't want to be foolish people who throw away the grace of God because you don't obey God. You throw away the gift of God. But let there be thanksgiving. A man should be thankful for a Proverbs 31 wife and a woman should be thankful for her husband. Not not making him feel like a failure. Not making him feel like his home is the last place he wants to go because he's more on a performance scale when he gets home than he was at work because he's treated like a failure. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or covetous, that, that is an idolater, and covetousness, you know, that climbing the corporate ladder for women and for men, that's covetousness, which is idolatry, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ or God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. So when you have this message in the church that your value, your worth, your dignity, your self-esteem is coming from things rather than the character of Christ and the, the things that Christ prioritizes, which is family, which is Christ-like character. These are empty words that are preached about success and high performance and, and bottom lines and bank accounts and, and, and statuses. And, and this is here. These things are idolatry and you don't have inheritance in the kingdom of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Why? Because with empty words, people in the church have been led astray from the sincere and pure devotion to following the word of God, to following Christ. Mm. The wrath of God comes upon those who put their priorities ahead of kingdom priorities. Therefore, do not be partners with them. All these partnerships with the, with the world's ideas of what success is. All these high-value man coaches, even in, in the Christian community, who make it all about the bottom line, all about the dollar. But it says here, do not be partners with them. Okay, Do not be partners with them. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of light is found in all that is good, right, and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. And we don't have. The revelation of the light because we have so many soft feminized uh, virtue signaling male pastors who cater to their female audience and are afraid to preach the word of God look carefully then how you walk not as unwise but as wise making the best use of time because the days are evil therefore do not be foolish but understand what the Lord's will is see this shouldn't be a message that's reserved only for Father's Day to break off a little cracker crumb for a man. It should be preached all the time. Do not get drunk with wine, which leads to debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. When you are literally walking around the verse that I'm getting ready to read that says, wives submit to your, you're walking around it like you're walking around a landmine. 
You're just afraid to say the word submit. You're being foolish because submission is one of the most highly valued and honored character traits in the kingdom to be submissive, to be humble. And you don't, you don't, you, you might preach to men about being submissive and humble, but you ain't preaching to no wives about it. (laughs) Don't be foolish. Understand what the Lord's will is. The Lord's will is that we be submissive to the word and to the will of God. Do not get drunk with wine, which leads to debauchery, but be filled with the spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual psalm songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. Harmonious, the lyrics of heaven, giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this, verse 21 submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. This is to be done brother to brother, you know, fellow brothers in this church to be, to submit to one another, to help one another, to be there for one another, to build one another up in our most holy faith. This is just a blanket that we're to do in the body of Christ. Submit to one another, be cooperative, be, have a partnering spirit. Don't Don't act like the Lone Ranger Rambo and the Terminator all rolled up into uh, some super Christian. Okay. And also get rid of the fakeness, get rid of the falsehood. Wives and husbands, wives submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body and is himself is savior. And we don't tell this many times. You know, the pastor's saying everything Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so wants to hear. And you've made your pastor the head of of yourself and not your husband. How much does he want to go to that church where the pastor is participating in man shaming? Shame on you, pastor. Shame on any pastor who shames men out of their biblical role and doesn't call women to their biblical role. Ouch. Amen. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husband. What does submission do? It means give yourself to, give yourself away. You sing this song, I give myself away. I give myself away. You're supposed to give yourself away to your husband. Not 5%, not 10%, not 2%, 100% to your husband. First, first, you sh- it says as, as the church submits to Christ, so submit to your husband. Your first order of business, submit to Christ. If you're submitted to Christ, next order of business in Christian family, submit to your husband. Give yourself to your husband. Because your husband is, is required to give himself to you. You know, people say, oh, it works 50-50. It doesn't work 50-50. 50-50 is not the, not the commodity in the kingdom. It's 100, 100. Each person gives themselves to the God 100%. You give 100% of your way to God. You don't give him 50, 50. You give 100% of your God, yourself to God. God says, submit yourselves one to another out of reverence for Christ. He says, wives submit to your husband. But he also tells husbands to give themselves up for their wives. But the coin doesn't get a heads and tails aspect of this coin. It doesn't work when a husband is playing chess and a wife is playing checkers or tic-tac-toe because you want to be like your girlfriends. You want to be like all the single ladies, all the single ladies. Put a ring on it, put a ring on it. He put a ring on it, but you still acting like you, your own. And I'm not talking about worldly people. I'm talking about in the church. And it's, it's cultivated. It's joked about. It's laughed about. Every man goes to a job. If he wants to keep that job, he shows up on time. He does what is required of him. And he submits himself to the standards and expectations of the workplace. So when it says, wives, submit to your husband, as unto the Lord, submit. Submit. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. That's submission. That's laying your life down and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her, that that Christ would purify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, 
so that he might present her, the church, to himself in splendor. That Christ's role in the church is transformation. And a husband's role in his wife's life is transformation. You think you that God lets you marry that man so you could stay the same angry, bitter, contentious, ungrateful person you were? Now, you might not have shown all that until after you got him, till after he put the ring on it. But your husband's role in your life is transformation. It's to make you see a version of you that you don't see or agree with. Okay? If, if a husband's to love his wife the way Christ loved the church, Christ didn't just come and save me and redeem me to leave me the way he found me. He's changed me. He's changed my mind on topics. He's changed my mind on what it means to be a good man. He's changed my mind on what it means to be a husband. But, but if your husband is to love you as Christ loved the church, he ain't supposed to do that. He's supposed to clean you up. Your husband's supposed to help clean you up. He ain't supposed to throw dirt on you. He's supposed to be a part of you becoming all of whom God calls you to be. Washing of the water with the word so that he might present the church to himself in splendor. A husband is to is wanting to present his wife to himself in a splendor, in a beauty, in a royalty. Let me ask you something. Most men who are good, virtuous, character-driven men of Christ that I've known show the utmost respect and honor and cherish their wives. Why? Because that's in the nature of a man. Respect is a man's love language. Honor is a man's love language. Well, you know, I wait a minute. Let me just go on. <laughs> without word, he might present her to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish. He ain't wanting to say something bad about you. He ain't wanting to put you down. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. This is their, you know, if I hurt you, I hurt me. If I, if I, if I bless you, I bless me. This is reciprocity. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it. Just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. See, if you've got a, you know, and this is, this applies to Christ following disciples. If you got a man who's going to church, doesn't mean he's committed to Christ. Doesn't mean he's a Christian. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But is this man genuinely trying to provide for you, to protect you, to preside over the household, and to lead you to a good place? Is he, has, does he have your best interests at heart? At the heart and the core of his being, is he saying things that will work out for the best interests, not of himself, but for everyone? Does he, look in, does he look at things and not just say, oh, this is what I feel like doing today? Does he have, men usually have a long range outlook on things. If I do this now, it's going to mean this in five or six months. You may be only thinking momentarily, but he's thinking in a long range way. That's what a man does. He's not impulsive. He's not impetuous. He who loves his wife loves himself for no one hated his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it as Christ does the church. Sometimes your husband needs to tell you, no, that's not in our long-term best interest. You feel like doing it. You know, wives sometimes take college classes. They're married. They want to go a full-time schedule. That's not balanced, honey. Take part-time classes. Take two classes. Instead of trying to take five classes, you're married. You got responsibilities to not only your husband, but to your children. Be balanced. A good man, a wise man is going to see it that way. And you arguing and fussing with him because he's looking out for the best interests of everybody. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife. And the two, the two, not the, not the five, not the ten, two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I'm saying that it refers to Christ and the church. It also refers to husband and wife. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and the, let the wife see to it that she respects her husband. Remember what I said. There's a great book I read one time called Love and Respect. A man's primary love language is not feelings, is not nurturing, it's respect. 
disrespect your husband to make him feel the most unloved you will ever make him feel. That's what the word of God says. I don't know how how much kickback and how much hate I'm going to get off of this. I don't care because I presented and corrected the inaccurate, pathetic articulation of the order of God that that T.D. Jakes is putting out that has to do with who's feeding who. It doesn't have to do with who's feeding who. Marriage is meant to be a partnership and cooperative partnership and relationship, not competition, not rivalry, not faction, not envy. A wife is not to envy her husband's role as the leader and the head of the home, because if you submit under your husband, your husband is responsible. Your husband is responsible for everything. But if you get out of order, you get out from underneath the divine order, you're responsible, boo. You're responsible, honey. You He put a ring on it and you'll be responsible for taking a ring off it. Let me tell you what Proverbs 14, 1 says. The wise woman builds her house, but with the, her own hands, the foolish one tears it down. The wise woman builds her house, but with her own hands, with her own words, with her own actions, with her own acrimony, with her own hatred, with her own unforgiveness, with her own resentment, with her own envy, the foolish wife tears her house down. The Bible is not partial. It doesn't show partiality. It shows order. It shows order accurately and responsible, taking accountability and responsibility. The husband is held accountable and responsible. But if you get out from under order, you're like not like that wise woman that builds her house. You're like the foolish one that tears it down with her own hands. And you'll be held accountable and responsible for that. But we've got a culture that says, if it didn't work, it's his fault. If it didn't work, he didn't measure up to my standards or expectations. The question is, ladies, are you measuring up with biblical standards and expectations? Proverbs 31 wife, she's worth more than gold. That's what you're shooting for. He's shooting for being Christ-like, having Christ-like character, nature, and virtue. It isn't about his economic status. It isn't about his educational status. It's about his heart. And it's about his mind. And it's about his priorities. And he prioritizes you. And you neglect and deprioritize him and make him feel less than. That's a foolish wife who tears her house down. T.D. Jakes, the reason why you're getting so much kickback is because you preach a man-shaming cultural message so often. You should be doing this at least one weekend out of a month and not be ashamed of it. Proudly proclaim the divine order of the household accurately. Give up this, this tantalizing entertainment desire about you defining what the order is. You know, a husband can feed his wife, okay? Provide for his wife. It doesn't mean the wife can't feed him, okay? But she can't feed him the forbidden fruit of taking over the household and being the head of her husband. This is Brother Rob Wilson. Drop a comment, like, share. Uh, make sure you subscribe. If you've made it this long, you must have found this interesting. This is longer than I planned on doing. But this is the divine order. And because we've got disordered men and disordered women and disordered families and disordered communities and disordered schools and disordered cities and disordered states out of the divine order, we've got disorder, chaos, and anarchy ruling in the nation. Healing begins in the home. Psalm 127, unless the Lord builds the house, the laborers labor in vain, which buildeth it. And if the house is built on a rock, it will withstand the storm. But if it's built on the sand of culture and the way the winds are blowing in society, it's going to fall. It's going to collapse. That's why we see the collapse of families. That's why we're seeing the collapse of men. That's why we're seeing the collapse of masculinity because of cowardice and caving in to culture. This is Brother Rob Wilson. Peace and love in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.